this what illustrates do is these patterns the give us an understanding of where it might be Five and how to expect other things to look okay. in the next areas. Meaning is our personal experience within those places. I'm so for example, if we were buried in Paris, you'd have a very good understanding of what that place Take is like because it would really stick out in your mind. These create a sense of orientation for us because we can understand how other areas might look tell you and then how they might relate to us and, and create a we better sense of understanding. Yep. Yep. You have to search up so how does this relate so to the image of the dioramas? Well, if we look back through this again, these elements do not have a great sense of pattern in them, so they don't work as well. However, we're not able to understand the, the whole of this. If, however, we had more identity, more like kinds of elements, we can immediately understand what we might be dealing with. This is just bringing out a key iconic element in this larger image. And if we have a better, clear structure of what these shapes might be inside of it, that pattern allows us to understand what the other elements of this might look like. And so we can get a better understanding of what the whole might be. And on top of that, if you hugged a tiger, you would have a very good understanding of what tigers look like from a really, really close perspective. So you'd always remember them. So when you see little tiny details of an image like this, you'd quickly be able to understand that it might have been a tiger because you have that personal connection with it. And this is the image of the whole. This is what we see in those little pieces. And if we can get better identity, we can start to understand what that whole might have been. The thing is, how are we going to define space? as well. So we don't often think about how we're defining space and, and why it's important, but it's worth doing. It's really interesting that interior design actually talks about this, because we often don't we just create walls and floors and things like that. But we can do more than that. First, we want to think about what our spatial definition is. How do we define space? And we define space through either literal or implied. So literal space is walls and those are yeah, like two amazing yeah, like things that we're dealing with when we're dealing with space, walls, floors, and ceilings. Things that block one uh, space off uh, from another. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, just like so we can think about how literal space it. relates to orientation. I'm not so sure for example, if we have to, literal uh, space defined yeah, 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 in this sort of office area, everything is symmetrical. You don't have to do if it. we actually look at this uh, moving through it, we see things become a little tricky to understand. I'll help you out. When we're looking at this area, it's hard to really fully understand how we're seeing this space. As we move through it, things get really confusing. When we walk through one hallway, everything looks the exact same. If you go around the corner, same. Go through one end, everything looks the same. At this point, we've got to count how many times we walked through here. Did we already pass through this hallway? Show you how to Did, have we come full circle at this point? We have to count the number of yeah, times, because that's which is tricky to do. It's hard to remember. Yeah, that's what we're uh, every direction we look, I think things we want to do something like a horror games kind of do this a lot of times to really disorient so and like confuse a player, yeah. to make them distressed. Because uh, where are we now? Some images now, however, if we change these shapes, make them and, and less similar, so that every time we look at something, we're seeing something a little bit different. We start to notice the patterns that exist here. Two doors in one area is different from one. <coughs> and so when we look down one hallway, we can immediately see that things are a little bit different. The orientation of where doors are in other hallways helps as well. All these little changes means that we can understand where we're situated in space. So every time we look through these, we can start to see, I know where I am, because this corner I've never seen before. Maybe like a future, future and each little area looks slightly different from the other. We can start to spot those yeah, patterns like and understand how to get back to where we might have wanted to have been. But next we can think about well, implied well, space. Think it's if it's science, implied space is when it's one science area is suggested from another in a larger space. Uh, so we have our main area here, to to our to walls, space. our literal space. Then we also have two you implied do, you spaces want to do kind of like a space one and space two. And this is useful for us because users do like to be able to understand how to break a space apart. And it does give you a sense of being within a more confined space, even though you might not actually be 
was that there's complexity, coherence, legibility, and mystery that all kind of tie those images together and make people want to approach those. So complexity is the idea that we want a certain amount of visual detail in our visual field. So we want to see things and break things apart. We want to have a kind of feast for the eye. There are lots of things there for us to look at. to Sam. Uh, guys, um, Devon, I want to make like. And I'll tell you to look at some uh, references for uh, Victorian for furniture, all right? Okay. So, guys, I almost forgot one more thing. Um, when you search up like your actual images, so let's search up. Uh, trying to think, trying to think of, trying to think of a good place. Uh, in the Soviet Union in Russia. Perfect to Noble, uh, one of those Russian airplanes. Oh, uh, Russian, oh, the secret cold was something unfaithful. I'm thinking about the one in Moscow. No. The Kremlin. Oh, uh, Kremlin, yeah. Kremlin. So when you actually search for like for images, um, go to options. Uh, no, my mistake. Um, right where under search tools is, go to search tools, and get large uh, references to get to get like high quality images. Go to images, search tools, and then just click on large. Because what I'm looking for, for like for your reference images, um, just click on like, just search for like for, for high quality um, images. Just go to images, any size, and by default it would be any size. And then if you go to click on size, you click on large, medium, just click on large, and then it'll give you the highest quality uh, images that you can find. But that's one example. The Kremlin is one example uh, uh, of just how I've showed you. You can basically search like um, for your reference images that way. So that's what I want you guys to do is, is to search up and find your reference images that way. Monte, uh, should we get Freddie to start looking at some images and references? All right. Aunt, yeah, after when, when I finish the... Uh, yeah. All right, but make sure it's after this one, all right? Okay, all right. awesome. This is done. Also, if you have any questions or concerns about my Photoshop work, uh, let me know. Okay. It's looking good so far. Thanks. I'm trying to do, like, some promotional banner art. Yeah, I see. Yeah. All right.